Hello and welcome again. I'm Jeremy Johnson, Vice President of Product Management and Product Design here at JAMA Software. And this is part two of our focus on JAMA Software Labs and our new technology initiatives as part of the JAMA Software Innovation Insights podcast series. Back again with us is Joseph Pitaresi. He's Senior Product Manager overseeing JAMA Software's innovation and new technology initiatives. Welcome, Joseph. Jeremy, thanks again for having me. I'm, I'm happy to be here. I just want to reiterate, uh, I'd love to have everyone check out Advisor. It's at labs.jamasoftware.com. Absolutely. And that was a big focus of our um, our first uh, in this series, the first part of this series. Uh, we talked about it at Requirements Advisor. We talked about uh, the Jama Software Labs team and our charter and where we're focused um, here today. Where do you think we should take this, this discussion, Joseph? Well, Jeremy, um, it's a great topic. Um, If we step aside from advisor for just a second, um, I think it would be good to touch on some general best practices for requirements authoring. And uh, and then I could talk a little bit about what's next for advisor uh, on our roadmap, innovation roadmap, and also some new concepts that we're working on in Java Software Labs. Sounds great. Yeah, so let's... So let's maybe start with that first topic. Um, what do you see as some of the things that um, that we see at JAMA, some of the best practices folks can take away from uh, for improving their requirements uh, development process? Yeah, well, I think it's a great topic. So stepping a, a little bit aside from the requirements advisor itself, just, you know, how do you write good requirements or what are some some skills that are helpful. And yeah. actually, jamasoftware.com has an amazing amount of free information on, on writing better requirements. I, I really like the, you know, for me, it's great to have a high level view and also go down into the details, but I really like our five best practices for writing requirements. We actually have a, an infographic on that and a white paper and a webinar. But, you know, in, the, in a nutshell, um, it's, you know, you really want to create uh, great effective communication between the stakeholders in product development um, and, you know, uh, get that synergy, that cross-organizational synergy, because it takes many talents and skills and unique strengths that individuals bring to a product development team. Absolutely. But getting, yes, and, and that's the beauty of it. You know, that, that's, the, that's the fun of this kind of work. Yeah. Um, but um, getting everyone on the same page is a significant challenge. And so uh, some of the basic things I think that people should think about is, you know, number one is have a really clear understanding of the problem that you're trying to solve. And that's, you know, that's kind of the start. Yeah. But also, one of the things that our people probably spend the least amount of time on, because there's a lot of assumptions brought to the table about what problems they're trying to solve. So I think documenting and really having a clear group understanding of the of problem that's that's trying to be solved is is fundamental. Yeah, absolutely. And and then uh, usually most of the time there's a, you know, there's a hierarchy of requirements and of importance. And so, you know, it's important for everyone to have a view um, on importance, but also the interconnectedness of, of, uh, of different requirements for any product, project or product. So, you know, having a requirements hierarchy is, is really, really helpful. Again, written, written down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so that's, that's really key. And um, another thing, uh, uh, one, one misstep that is so common, I think almost on every project, is while people are writing requirements, it's, it's very tough, particularly for engineers, it's very tough to avoid integration of, of design within the requirements themselves. Yeah. You know, you're talking about um, a battery and you, 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 Start getting in into the how and the about specific chemistry. What, details. What chemistry yep. is the best chemistry, oh, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's like, don't do that. <laughs> don't, yeah. don't do that. Just put the re- functional requirement or the requirement in there yep. and then 
go through a separate process of figuring out the best way to design it and do it. So yeah. keeping design yeah. out of the requirements is really a, a key, a key yeah. thing. Absolutely. Um, another thing that that's obvious, uh, but challenging is ambiguity. And so yeah. by that, I mean, obviously you, you don't want a requirement to be, you, you want it to be unambiguous. You don't want it to have ambiguity, but that's easier to say and hard to do, particularly yeah. in the complex environment where you have yeah. mechanical intricacy, uh, you know, complex software, uh, complex material science being used, yeah. you know, in the confluence of, of all the elements of, of creating the product and the core building blocks, um, it's very easy to get ambiguous in the requirements because of the complexity of, of the products that, that people are building today. So yeah. try to try to avoid, uh, make, make the requirements unambiguous. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, one, one really helpful thing to do is to use um, templates and include group discussions, you know? So yeah. if you have a template for how to structure requirements uh, to get started, that, that accelerates, saves a lot of time. But then as those um, are filled out, make that a group discussion and not an individual discussion, because that gets um, mutual understanding, people involved in the project, and that, that leads to successful projects so much. It's an, it's, it's an exponential element of successful projects. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think the, I mean, those are, those are great things for folks to, to focus on. Um, there's another piece that we have out there that, that folks can take a look at it as well. They hit on some of the things that you mentioned, but there's some additional pieces. We've got a, um, the eight do's and don'ts of uh, requirements management. That's another good one. You hit on templates and some of those. The, the, the other component that I think is important to add would be um, regular reviews uh, with with stakeholders, right? And you touched on it before, the, the collaborative piece. So I think it's one to, to reinforce with folks is, you know, looking at early stages of the development process, collaborating on requirements, doing peer level reviews before you get into the more rigorous um, in-depth uh, reviews later in the process, making sure that you're capturing um, the, the right level of detail that you're hitting on some of these things that you've, that you've outlined so that things are very clear. Um, so much benefit can happen in the entire product development life cycle when the requirements are tight and clean and well understood at the front end. So much time savings, um, so much avoidance of potential rework and quality issues and all of those kinds of things. Um, or simply even, you know, reducing some of the friction in the process can, can have a lot of benefit. So I, I think that's a big one to emphasize as well. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of other don'ts and there are things that we cover in with requirements advisor and in some of the tools that we provide, you know, the use of adverbs and not being ambiguous, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. um, Keep and design out. Uh, don't do negative requirement statements is another big one where, you know, if you try to do the negative, you've got this infinite universe of things that it could possibly be, right? Focus very specific on, on what is the, the exact specification, not the it, it, it should not do things because then it's, it's just a huge, uh, a huge universe. Um, so, um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, one of one of the things that that I like to talk about from my my experience developing yep. products, I've developed all different yep. kinds of products, and you know, in a perfect world, what people want to do is you know uh, define marketing requirements, and then engineers want to look at the marketing requirements and define the engineering requirements, and then go through iterations of that, call those golden, give them the seal of approval, and yeah. then just go into execution. Yeah. And the thinking is, oh, we know exactly what we're going to build. We know what we need to do, and we're just going to go do it. Yeah. And in the reality of today's complex products and complex development environment, as you go through the phases of development in any project, there's compromises made 
real time in how those requirements are implemented. Yeah. And there needs to be a feedback loop because a lot of times requirements may shift in small increments in the middle through the cycle of product development. And so it's so critical to have that real-time review and adjust and document decisions that are made as you go through the process. Because when that doesn't happen, I've been on projects where those real-time intra-development reviews happen and documentation happens, those products succeed. They're very yeah. successful in their markets. Yeah. The ones where that don't happen, failure is a high probability. Yeah, you can end up in a completely wrong intended location if you do <laughs> a lot of incremental things that suddenly give you a left turn. Yeah. And at the end, it's shocking. Like you do the, the right. postmortems, the post evaluation. Yeah. You go, "How did we end up here? Yeah. How did we? Yeah. We started Absolutely. here. Absolutely. How did we get to here?" And, yeah. and that, so it is a real time process and that's what that, yeah. you know, documenting requirements and reviewing through the development cycle is, is super helpful. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. That's a, it's a great point. Um, I, so I think it's, it's a good, so we talked, we talked about advisor and we talked about some of the best practices that we're, we're advising folks on in general. I think, you know, maybe the next thing we should, we should talk about Joseph is, is what's next, right? We have we have this beta um, out there for folks to to take a look at and try out, and we're continuing our research and learning process. But um, you know, what's what's next for NLP and advisor and things? What do we uh, what are we thinking yeah. about here at, at JAMA? Let's take the folks through that. Well, and I just want to do reiterate: please use Requirements Advisor. <laughs> please give us feedback, good and what, what you like and what you don't like, Absolutely. we value those equally. Yeah. Uh, and you can help us build this tool for you so that you can yeah. get the maximum value out of it. So yeah. please, we, we really highly request that you and highly value your engagement on this. Yeah. So what's next? So for advisors specifically, we're continuing to uh, extend its evaluation capabilities. Um, in COSI, there's 42 in COSI rules. And yeah. we're just beginning the INCOSI, I'm on the corporate board of advisors of INCOSI and in the requirements working group. And we're just beginning to draft the next version of the, of the rules document. So uh, we're implementing the current one. And so yeah. this is you know, constantly evolving and improving, but we're going to um, continue to add the support for more rules from the INCOSI yeah. guide. And so that's a big part of our development. And then, the ears patterns are, um, again, those are language patterns within sentences. And um, we'll continue to extend the application of those patterns uh, within, within, uh, within our advisor. And, and ears is even evolving as well. There's not a current sure. next version, but you know, we work with, uh, with Mav, the, the yep. original originator of ears. And, uh, and so that's, that's an ongoing development. So continuing Absolutely. to expand the evaluation criteria that we have today. Now, um, and again, our unique approach is, is the combination of the rules and, and the patterns. So a lot of focus on that. Yeah. Um, now, it's important, I think, to communicate that um, the advisor is really the end application of, of NLP processing. And so a, a big part of our work is building the engine underneath requirements advisor. And we're currently in the process of instantiating a natural language processing service to be a fundamental building block within JAMA Connect. That's our goal is to establish a fundamental building block for NLP. An advisor is just the first instance of an application and usage of that capability. We, yep. because engineering requirements are written in natural language, we're incredibly excited about uh, learning how we can apply NLP to different aspects of JAMA Connect. Yep. And, you know, just in a recent review of our current roadmap of all the things that we're, we're uh, touching and improving on in the platform, 
uh, every day I, I have, we have new ideation about how NLP can help that roadmap, you know, go forward even faster. So yeah. that's something that we're, we're definitely looking on. So some of the things that we're thinking about in terms of next uh, is really sure. a more broad umbrella of language tools. So yeah. looking at things, considering things like vocabulary, dictionary, glossary, and even ontology for specific uh, device types. And uh, we're, we're looking at, at in, in, enhancing, adding to the language tools. Um, the other areas that customers have told us that are, that are very time consuming and challenging is in the area of, um, you know, epics, writing epics and story creation. And they're, they're, we're asking the questions, is there an opportunity to look at requirements and begin the idea of automating or helping automate streamlining development of epics and, and story creation? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then uh, another area that's really time consuming, has been time consuming, but critically important is in test plan creation. Yeah. And, you know, there's a linkage between <laughs> requirement statements and test plans, it, there's a direct line. It's not a dotted line. It's Absolutely. a direct line. Absolutely. Yeah. So the question is that we're asking ourselves, is there a way to use natural language processing to, to connect those two? Can we generate yep. test plans uh, based on, on requirements if we have good requirements? We, yep. we think that's an opportunity. Absolutely. And then, you know, broadly, with with data, there's so much data involved in, in all of this product development process and across the, the JAMA Connect platform. Uh, you know, it wasn't even that long ago. I'll, I'll say 10 years ago, we were trying to get to the data. But, you yeah. know, we didn't have enough data. Yeah. And that's completely inverted now. Now we have <laughs> too much data. We're drowning in data. Absolutely. Yeah. What data is important? Yep. So how can we use NLP, AI, and machine learning to perhaps bring visualization to data to see relationships in our in, in the process of product development that yep. you just don't naturally see? So that's another area that we're absolutely we're beginning to poke on. Absolutely. No, that's that's great. And so I, I would assume the natural question that folks are going to have is, you know, what what is what does that mean? How fast is that going to go? What's you know, what's when am I going to see these things in the in the core product and things? And so, you know, I'll, I'll maybe speak to that a little bit. And you and you really touched on it earlier, but I'll reinforce. Um, we're following the market, right? We're following our customers, and so the feedback that we get is going to dictate how fast we go. We certainly anticipate that requirements advisor is going to go from this beta phase into core product phase, and and you mentioned the high value, right? Getting that as close as possible to requirements authoring, requirements reviews, getting that heavily integrated. So that's certainly on our uh, in our view. Um, but we want this feedback. We want to understand, you know, the value and how close we are to, to delivering that value. And that certainly will evolve over time. Um, now, in general, I certainly expect these efforts to grow. Uh, we've, we've been at, at JAMA Software, we've made a very conscious move and rightfully so in our roadmap over the last 18 to 24 months to be highly focused on you know, very specific pain points that our customers have today. And mm -hmm. so we've really been focused on the core core product around baseline improvements and review center and getting into test center and variant management and some of those. But this part of our work, this part of our effort is certainly something that will continue to grow. Um, Joseph, under under your leadership and, and with uh, our, our product development colleagues, um, and in partnership with our customers, um, we've we very much partner uh, with our customers regularly. Uh, the research that we do, it's it's all arm in arm with our customer base. Um, so I definitely expect this focus around NLP and, and machine learning. And as you mentioned, getting into AI at some point in the future as that next uh, leap that we'll take will continue to grow certainly this year and, and into the years to come. So um, yeah. 
So really appreciate Joseph, you taking the time uh, here to walk walk us through what's what's happening here with the the JAMA Labs team, uh, the JAMA Software Labs team, uh, what's going on with Requirements Advisor. Um, and so thank you again, appreciate your time. Um, and we hope to see everybody again soon on our uh, podcast series. Well, thank you, Jeremy, and I really appreciate it. And I can't wait to hear from customers. When you go to labs.jamasoftware.com, you can directly communicate with us and give us your yeah. feedback. And we like to hear what you like and how we can make Absolutely. it better. Look forward Absolutely. to hearing from you. Absolutely. All right. Thanks again, Joseph. All right. Good luck, everybody. Thanks for joining. Thank Thanks.